You've probably never heard of Wasson Creek. It's just a small little stream that runs through our ranch. You could step over it and not even realize there's a creek underneath your foot. Wasson Creek, even though it's a tiny creek, it, it represents a value to my family and I think society. It's just a small tributary to a bigger river system, but those streams are so critical that it's just a, it's like a lifeblood to the community. You know, where would we be without our water? From the standpoint of what most people think of as a fishing creek, it's not a fishing creek. But its value is that these main stem rivers that have native fish in them depend upon these little tributaries like Wasson Creek to be the nurseries that actually populate the larger streams. The fish faced three problems. First, they faced a dry stream bed. Second, temperatures when there was water in the stream would be too hot for the fish to survive. And third, the irrigation diversions would draw fish out into the fields where they'd turn into fertilizer. The fixes for these various problems for the fish were to get water back in the stream through a water lease, put screens on the ditch so that the fish wouldn't go down the ditches, and third, to keep the cows out of the creek long enough for the streamside vegetation to grow back in ways that would provide shade to allow that creek to cool down. Ranchers are very nervous about having their water rights tinkered with. We still wanted to maintain a viable ranching operation on that particular piece of ground that Wasson Creek used to irrigate. I was worried that if uh, we might end up losing in the long run, that we would be losing these precious water rights that are so critical to our operation. My role was to spend time with them to explain how their water rights work, how this process would work, and the steps that we would take to assure that their water rights were secure. After a short time with Stan and working with him, those uh, fears kind of went away because it, it just felt like Stan was doing everything he could to protect our rights and our values. It felt like he was on our side. So um, then we kind of let down our guard a little bit. And, and once we got to that point, then we could begin to talk about how we could actually figure out a way to keep this water in stream. It's not just water that can make a stream healthy again. TU's Big Blackfoot Chapter, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, and other partners identified several of the problems posed to the fish aside from water. As part of the restoration, the Mannix Ranch fenced off more than a mile of Wasson Creek from cattle grazing. The project partners planted willows and built up stream banks and TU installed screens to prevent fish getting trapped in irrigation ditches. It used to be a real bog where cattle would cross it. Um, it was just a mud hole. And just within a few years, the stream narrowed and deepened. What we're starting to see up and down the riparian area, since the cattle access has been limited, it's allowed some of these shrubs to rejuvenate themselves and reestablish seedlings in, in other areas. That cover and that diversity makes for a healthy, resilient uh, riparian area. It makes the banks, the stream banks more stable. It uh, helps cool the water, keep the water temperatures cool, which is real critical for cutthroat trout. When we monitored temperatures in Wasson Creek in 2004, at the mouth of the creek, we measured temperatures as high as 80 degrees, which is way beyond what cutthroat trout can survive in. The first year after the restoration was completed at the mouth, in the hottest summer on record, 2007, we measured a temperature of 66 degrees. That's 14 degrees difference, and that 14 degrees is the difference between life and death for cutthroat trout. What that tells us is that even in really bad hot years, if this habitat is intact, it will support cutthroat trout. Now if you go up there, just about any time I go there, I can see one, a little fish scurry off into the shadows. And the fishing game has been back every year to inventory the fish numbers 
and they've continued to increase and uh, they're very pleased with the, with the numbers that they're seeing. The value, I, I think, to us is uh, in our hearts and souls uh, on, on a project like that. And it wasn't a lot of inconvenience for us and it was very little expense for us. Because of uh, this lease agreement has worked so well for us, then we entered into the 10-year lease and that will expire in 2017 and we would hope that we could extend that. My grandfather taught us a lot. He was always able to instill some of the land ethics that he had. He said, I don't feel like I'm a, that I own this land. I don't feel like it's mine. He felt like he was a steward of the land and that he was just here temporarily and it was his duty to leave the land in better condition than he found it. And I think that uh, we share that ethic and I, I hope that um, in the end that, that our legacy will show that.